hey hey everybody welcome welcome so you guys i got a word such a good word from the lord um it's a warning but i definitely got a word from me lord and um he gave me this word literally um so because it's midnight now so it's 12 55 and it's November 17, 2022. This word was given to me on November 15, 2022 at 11.38 p.m. But it also went into the 16th as well. I was up to like four, um, could have been almost five, um, where God was giving me all this and, um, and we were communicating because he wants me to give this word out. At first, I was just reading it, but then, you know, I was told to write it. And then as I started writing it, I realized, oh, okay, God, you want me to tell the people this. This is a warning. I mean, I guess it's not a warning because it's, it's, it's about to happen. Like, I feel like a warning is like, this is, you have a chance to kind of clean it up, but... I mean, I guess you do in a sense, right? You can always repent. So I guess this is like a warning. <laughs> and and for some and others, it's just it's just going down. Um, but anyway, so you guys, we are going to be getting the word from God. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally love to receive the word from God. And um, I think this is a real good word, especially for the... For the children of God, this is great because God is coming for his children. He's been coming for his children. He don't play about his children. And um, that's a beautiful thing to have somebody on your side who is always fighting for you. Even when you don't know that you even need to be fought for. It's a beautiful thing because even with my own testimony, like... I didn't even know I was I was lost like that that's why you know in my videos I'm just like you know like people need to have compassion like when I when I be speaking I I be speaking from my own life from the things I've experienced myself you know I'm not just talking to be talking like I'm talking about a God who came after me who fought for me even when I didn't know that I needed saving. You know, I thought, you know, even though I was doing worldly music, I'm like, it's okay, God, because you know when I talk about you, you know, like if I'm doing interviews and stuff, like they go they gonna hear about you. Like you naturally just flow through me, you know, but in actuality I was I was lukewarm. I mean that's just what it was and God told me you know, like, I I'm, was going to lead a generation to hell. <laughs> and that sounds really crazy because, you know, at that time I didn't even, I didn't even think that that was the case because I'm like, my main God, like I was, I always talk about you. I mean, I talk to you. I mean, what do you mean? I'm going to lead them to hell, but it's because I'm lukewarm, like I'm, I'm talking about God, but then when I'm on stage and I'm, and I'm doing all these other things, like they're seeing the world, you know, the, he might pop out a, a bit, you know, when I'm talking, but what they mainly see is the world, you know, like I told you guys, I was a cusser, you know, I, I, I was wild, okay, I was wild out here, mm. and <laughs> thank the lord i am i'm a new creature a new creation in christ okay I, I got it together i know now and my goal and my commitment is i'm going to lead a generation to heaven to heaven so i went ahead and i gave up my music um for the world i stopped listening to that stuff I, I mean I cut a lot of things out of my life I really really laid it down because I'm like God I'm I don't want to lead nobody to hell me alone I don't want to go to hell you know I thought I was gonna go to heaven because <laughs> I'm like God you love me you came through for me like we should be like this but in actuality 
you know if you watch my other video i think it's called are you really saved that goes and that breaks things down like i was not in the will of god i was not doing what god wanted and i was doing partly what he wanted but mainly what i wanted you know and and i had no shame in that i i really thought like you know like me and god were tight but the truth is he said those who love me do my commandments and how could i sit over here and be like i love god i love god but when he was telling me do this or telling me do that i i wanted to do what i wanted to do i'm like oh no god like and not to tell y'all my whole story but that's not what i'm here for <laughs> not what i'm here for i got a word and so but i'm just saying like that's why even with this message i'm about to give it means a lot to me because it shows me the heart of God like the heart of God and I feel like that's something people don't take into consideration or really think about like God don't need us he doesn't if he really wanted he could take back the will he gave us and control us all that's nothing say a word it's done and even more you know he could kill us all like he did with the noah days and make new people and give them more willpower or make them more disciplined or um make them more obedient and get his agenda done get his plans and his purpose done like that's nothing for him to do but he's so loving and he's so patient and he's so kind and he's so merciful that he continues to work with us he continues to work with us and he doesn't give up on us like till our last breath He's even fighting for us. And that is love. That is love. Because I know some of y'all know somebody who, you know, got kicked out their house for doing the wrong thing or being disobedient or not listening to a parent. Like, I know there's a lot of situations if we really sat back and reflected on, we could be like, yeah, it, is, it could be rough. It could be rough. But God is just coming for us and chasing us and loving us loving us back into our um rightful position as kings and as queens like he is putting us you guys like in heavenly places and it's not like we deserve it it's not like we can earn it it's just he loves us so much that he wants us to have the best and he fights for us just to live live in our highest form of his creation like he wants us to live in holiness righteousness and then you guys think about it like he wants us to live as royal like royal p like a royal priesthood like like he he wants us to have the inheritance of a kingdom think about the kingdoms here on earth because heaven is beyond that you know this is just like an it's nothing compared to the kingdom of god being in the kingdom of god and so think like he's fighting for us to live in a palace to go from the pit to the palace like that's all he's fighting for he's not fighting so we just give our lives to him and then you know he controls us and then we're like depressed sad suicidal and all these stuff like he has us like just so that we can live in the purest form of excellence and it's all in purity it's all in a pure heart like there's no darkness in god like he don't want us just so he can you know ruin us wreck us um 
and demolish us. You know, like the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God don't come for none of that. God comes so we can be in the light, so we can be in peace, so we can be in joy, so we can have dominion and authority and subdue the land and to multiply, like to do these great things while the devil is fighting for us to be miserable to be suicidal to um to have anxiety to be depressed to live in misery like you know like the devil fights for us to live that miserable life that he's living in and god fights for us so we can live in the palace the devil is the pit and God is the palace. And it's like he's fighting for us to be loved, to be taken care of, to be provided for, so he can nurture us, so he can protect us, so he can be with us. Like, like I don't know if, if, if you're getting it, but it's like he's fighting to love us. That's it. He is just fighting to love us that's why when i'm like reading the bible and and i'm reading the part where it says where god is like i brought you out of egypt like when i read that like that that does something to me because i was once in egypt i was once in bondage i was once you know having strongholds having yokes and burdens and and they were not light they were heavy like i was once in egypt a slave and enslaved to sin and it was ruining my life it was ruining my life i mean i was being attacked a lot i was living in in sadness and depression having anxiety i mean and they're crazy and it's just crazy because it's like those are so so the spirit of the world like there's nothing in the world that is for us children of God and it's like now that God has brought me out of Egypt and I'm here with him now I'm just don't pay attention to my stomach y'all but anyways it's like now I, I have so much peace I have so much joy and I've seen so much, like the scales off my eyes are like gone. I see so much. I have encounters with God. I experience Him, you know, in ways that I never was able to really experience with Him as a child. I mean, He would speak to me, of course, and I always knew who God was, which was why I didn't know I was lost. Um, but you know, God loves us, and you know, when I think about it, sometimes it's like mercy and grace sometimes hinders us because we think, because you know everything is going so well that we're in the will of God because He protects us so much. But in reality, it's like maybe we would be getting burned sooner, you know, like maybe we would get it together. But then again, you guys, we need um, grace and mercy because. If we didn't have that, we'd literally be living in hell on earth, like, for real, for real. Like, the absence of God would be for real. But we get the mixture here on earth. We get a bit of heaven, we get a bit of hell, and we're just training. And, and God is just weeding out who's going to live with him and who's going to live with the devil. That's all that is. And, um, and so I'm just here to say, like... God is such a good God, so even with this message that I'm about to give, you know, like, it's beautiful because it's the heart of God, and it shows that God will not stop at nothing for his children, and so let's get into prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, we thank you, we thank you for for speaking to us, for fighting for us, for loving us, for never giving up on us, God, for always seeing us, for not taking your spirit from us, for not taking our lives away, God. I just thank you that you're merciful, that you're loving and you're kind and it's everlasting and that you're the same today, tomorrow, and forever. You don't switch up on us. You don't go telling our secrets to the world. You don't go bashing us, but instead you speak highly of us in rooms, Father God, where we have not even stepped into 
to yet. You have been molding us and shaping us and getting us ready for the true calling on our lives, God, and getting us in position. Father God, I'm thankful that when nobody believed in us, you believed in us. When nobody thought any, saw any good in us, you saw good in us, and you said you would bring it forth in us, that you wouldn't let us die, but that you're resurrecting us even when we were, you know, partially dead and when we were in the world. And some still are in the world, but Father God, I thank you that you are taking their grave clothes off. I thank you that they're getting new wineskin, Father God. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you that your love is not conditional, you know, but that it's unconditional. I thank you that you don't love us in convenient situations, but you love us through it all. You love us through our highs and our lows. You love us through our tantrums and through, you know, our, our resting and our peace, Father God. Like, you love us in our worst, Father God. And there's nowhere, nowhere that you wouldn't go to come get us. So, Father God, I am just thankful. I pray that your heart is displayed in this message. I pray your character is displayed in this message. I pray that they're able to see you in this message. Because all this is is your love. I know some people try to say it's just the rule book that God, you know, that the white man used for the slaves but that's not true that's just another scheme of the devil to keep us from reading what your book says about us what the holy bible says about us what it says about your children because our identity is in this book who you are is in this book had i not read this and got revelation off of this i would not be the me i am today i am a living testimony that your words are living and active like you said they are that they are piercing in between joints and marrows and the soul and the spirit father god that it's a double-edged sword i am living proof because it pierced me it convicted me it changed me father god it changed me father god and i'm thankful that it transformed me and renewed my mind Father God, I pray you shut the voices of the enemy, Father God, in this moment. I pray that all distractions are removed and blocked off, Father, even if our phones are on airplane mode and you did it yourself. Father God, I pray that nobody interrupts. I pray that there's a hedge of protection around this call, around this video, around us who are watching it, so that everything you have for us, we don't miss it. We don't miss it at all. We don't miss it by blinking. We don't miss it by thinking of something else. But I pray so much revelation and truth is in here. I pray so much of your word and your mind is in this message and that nothing goes over our heads. I pray that our minds understand what you're saying, that our hearts are soft enough to understand and to feel and to get what you're saying and that our ears are clean enough and ready, Father God, so we catch everything you're saying in this hour. Father God, none of me, all of you. Spirit of the living God, none of me. But all of you show up and show out, show yourself, because you are worthy, worthy of the spotlight. You are worthy of the camera. You are worthy of the microphone. You are worthy to be seen and worthy to be praised and worshiped and honored. And I honor you and I exalt you because you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are magnificent. You are the light. You are everything we need and more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys. So this message is called Time's Up. God is coming for you. And we are going to be starting in Ezekiel 34. And so it started off with God saying, um, let me read it here. It says, as a shepherd, and I'm reading 12, as a shepherd cares for his herd in the day, when he is among his scattered sheep, so I will care for my sheep and will deliver them from all the places to which they were scattered on a cloudy and gloomy day. God is our true shepherd, y'all, and I'm thankful that I got a shepherd who will fight for me, who will go to war for me who will cut off necks and, and cut off everything and make it all bow down and burn into hell for eternity. I'm happy that I got a God that's bold, ain't scared of nothing. Scared of nothing, not no principality, not no powers, not no rulers, you know, and the darkness of the rulers of this world. 
or even you know wickedness in high places like i'm thankful that my god don't bow down to none i'm thankful that my god is the um, lion of judah i'm thankful that my god is just chilling not worry about nothing i don't know about y'all but i'm thankful that my god ain't never scared okay never and so then it says now i'm reading one it says then the word of the lord came to me saying son of man prophesy against the shepherd of israel prophesy and say to those shepherd thus says the lord god woe shepherds of israel who had been feeding themselves should not the shepherds feed the flocks come on jesus Come on. You eat the fat and clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter you yeah, you slaughter the fat sheep without feeding the flock. Whose I mean those who are sickly you have not strengthened, the diseased you have not healed, the broken you have not bound up, the scattered you have not brought back, nor have you sought for the lost, but with force and with severity <laughs> severity lord jesus you have dominated them they were scattered for lack of shepherd and they became food for every beast of the field and were scattered my flock wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill my flock was scattered over all the surface of the earth and there was no one to search or seek them Mm. Mm -mm. therefore you shepherds hear the word of the lord as i live declares the lord surely because my flock has become a prey my flock has become food for the beasts of the field for lack of shepherd of lack of shepherd and my shepherds did not search for my flock but rather the shepherd fed themselves and did not feed my flocks. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will demand my sheep from them and make them cease the feeding sheep. So the shepherds will not feed themselves anymore, but I will deliver my flocks from their mouths so that they will not be food for them we're going to jump down to 15. i will feed my flock and i will lead them to rest declares the lord god i will seek the lost bring back the scattered but bind up the uh, bind up the broken and strengthen the sick but the fat and the strong i will destroy i will feed them with judgment amen praise the lord and then i will set oh no that part not that i think that might be it because the rest of that is for something else all right and so you guys and then i went on to 22. so now i'm gonna break down what god was saying so here he says they were scattered for lack of shepherd and they became food for every beast of the field and were scattered my flocks wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill my flock was scattered over all surface of the earth and there was no one to search or seek them <sighs> you guys god was saying because you didn't do your jobs his sheep left the church and into the world even worse than before because you are supposed to be be a true representation of god but instead you now have them confused about him because you took advantage of them when you were supposed to prepare and protect them mm. You're supposed to prepare and protect them. But instead, you have them questioning God because everybody is like, because God is supposed to be in the church, first and foremost. When people go to church, they're not supposed to be running into all these wolves in sheep's clothing. 
They're supposed to be getting the word of God. They're supposed to be learning the truth. They're supposed to be prepared to go into the world. The church is supposed to equip them so they can go into the world and save. That's what's supposed to happen. But instead what's happening is they're being led astray and they're leaving the church instead of running to the church. And remember, God loves the church. Jesus died for the church. Even before Jesus went to get crucified, before Judas and them came for him, when he was praying, he prayed for the church. He also prayed for the disciples, his disciples. Because the sheep matter to God. And that's the problem. People forget. They get so high up that they forget that God is willing to do anything for his sheep, even if that means bringing you back down, even if that means him taking the anointing away, even if that means he has to take down the Saul and raise up a David, because God will not compromise anything for the sake of his children. And the church is supposed to represent God. The children of God are supposed to want to come to church, not leave because they have church hurt, because people in the church are either molesting the uh, church members, raping them, taking advantage of them, even when it comes to money. Come on now. This should not be church hurt. There should not be controlling, secretive things going on up in no church. What do you mean? And God is saying it's enough. He's had enough. He put them in your hands, hoping your hearts would remain pure. Because, you know, some come in to the positions with or the career with pure hearts. But what happens is the wolves end up turning these sheep into wolves, right? Or... or or even leading them astray, right? Corrupting them, taking God's word and trying to manipulate them or control them, trying to twist. But y'all, you know, it's, it's crazy because up in Revelation, God is clear. If you, um, you know, change the words and do all these things, like when it comes to his word, he said he had caused a plague. He will cause a plague on you. People aren't taking God serious because God got so much mercy and God being preached so much is like, you know, oh, we have grace. We have grace. God is love. <laughs> Unicorns, rainbows. It's a beautiful thing. But God is a God of wrath as well. God is a God of judgment as well. God is a God of war, you know? Because there was a war that happened in heaven when Satan and the one-third of the angels decided to turn their backs on God, right? That happened, and then God said, oh, okay, well, um, Michael, go handle him. So what happened? Michael goes, you know, grabs his squad and, uh, and beats them up and kicks them out like that because Satan and his kingdom ain't strong greater than god nor god you know god's folks and so you've been taking advantage of the children of god and now god is saying time's up god is saying behold i am against the shepherds and i will demand my sheep from them and make them cease the from feeding sheep meaning First of all, you're not going to be feeding them no more because obviously you don't know how to feed them. What you know how to do is take advantage of them. What you know how to do is is lead them astray. What you know how to do is destroy them, hurt them. When you are supposed to be building up the church for war, building up the church to fight, building up the church to rebuke, building up the church to cast out demons, building up the church to preach the gospel, building up the church to, to preach deliverance, building up the church to open the eyes of the blind, building up the church to resurrect the dead, building up the church to go save souls, 
but somewhere along the line you forgot your duties and instead you're just feeding yourself instead you're just worried about yourself instead you're forgetting to feed the flock that god gave you and now there's consequences hmm. because you're breaking and you're misleading his children and god don't play about children especially his and i don't know y'all i i ain't go to school to college for no bible study or um you know to know the theologies all this other stuff i didn't go to school so i don't know but i'm just gonna say what i'm gonna say if if they don't teach you about how much God loves his children. And if they don't teach you about how much God don't play about his sheep, that needs to be something that is taught. Because God says, too, don't be so eager to go preaching the word. Don't be so eager. Because you will be hold to, hold to a standard. Even in his eyes. Yeah, some people, you know, like, there's different, like, people think of, like, levels. Like, this preacher may be, like, a local, and this one might be, like, a mega, right? But what they fail to realize is God also holds you both to the same standard. To the same standard. Because you're still watching over his sheep. And God don't play about his sheeps. Just like a parent don't play about their children, God don't either, except it's worse, sir, because God also knows the heart and the intent and the motive. So it's even more dangerous because you can't front. And so also God was saying, he said, my flock wandered through all the mountains and on every high hill. My flock was scattered over all the surface of the earth. And there was no one to search for them. Meaning you don't even care about the sheep. You don't even care about the ones he gave you. And so he said, you have failed me. You have failed me, says the Lord. You have failed them. Remember, you were once a sheep that was lost, but I found Mm. I positioned you says the Lord he took you out of Egypt and you're supposed to be doing the same there's a scripture where it says you know how Jesus saved the captives so that the captives could be a host to save the rest of the captives so when you get free your job is to go free others you're not supposed to just be free and go live your merry go lucky life your job is to step into position and to save the rest of his children whatever you are set free from whatever you're saved from that's where your gift is and you're supposed to go save the rest but God says you have failed me says the Lord you have failed them as in the sheep remember you were once a sheep that was lost but I found you but I found you were lost but I found I positioned you People, 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 <laughs> people start to get scared of people. That's the problem. People start getting pressured from the people, right? This is a Saul moment where Samuel told him, hold on, I'll be back. Wait seven days. And then what happened? People start pressuring uh, Saul to do the offering and Saul gets all caught up. So what does he do? He goes burn the offering because the people... You can't be no people pleaser out here. Now I'm talking to also the ones who God is about to raise up. You better know who God is. You better better be scared of God, not no devil. 
Because what? He could what? Kill the body. But God could kill the body and send the soul to hell. So figure it out. You know, us being raised up in this hour, trained up in this hour, holding down our posts and our gates, right? You better get all that people pleasing up out of you, all that needing validation from the world up out of you, needing people to like you all up out of you. Because we're in the days of prosecution. We're in the days where, you know, people are going to be prosecuting us for saying the name of Jesus. People are going to be mad at us for even preaching. You know, we're not going to be able to be in some places or some restaurants or some churches or some of this and some of that. We're not in yeah, the churches because you know, God like God said, there's wolves and sheep closing up, but you know, up in the churches where people will hate on you because of your anointing and not want to give you a position because they jealous that God really put His hand on you and that you really surrendered while they pretending to surrender because they just really there for the people. They're just really there for the glory of themselves. They're not really there to do the will of God because anybody who's really willing to do the will of God will train up others and get as many people on, right? Because we can't all be all around the world at once. We can't all be doing deliverance, you know, um, not we can't yeah like we all can't be do, do you know doing the deliverance in one place or like i can't be doing deliverance in cincinnati in in texas you know i don't know why i just said like cincinnati i said like a city but like you know or just like i i can't you know, I can't be here, I can't be in Utah, I can't be in LA, I can't be in Texas, I can't be in New York, I can't be in Africa, I can't be in the UK, like, I can't be all around the world in one place, I mean, at one time, I cannot, but if we're out here raising other people, then there can be somebody up in the UK who's holding that down. Somebody out in Utah holding it down. Somebody out in LA holding it down. Like, and we're taking over territories, all breaking down the kingdom of God. We would be raising up others because we can't do everything. So to build up the body of Christ instead of being jealous, to build up the body of Christ, that means we can knock things out faster. Raising the dead faster healing the sick faster binding up the hearts of the brokenhearted faster divide and conquer instead one person wants all the glory wants all the fame wants all the attention so what they want to do is when they start to see god's children for real for real trying to take over and hold down the post and come in they don't want you to come in because they don't want your anointing to outshine theirs like who got time for that are you here for god or are you not yeah, I mean, because I'm going to let you know now, if you're not here for God, you getting booted. You are, because God is tearing down the souls, rising up the Davids, tearing down the souls, and rising up the Davids. And all of you who are working for the devil, don't worry. If you, you don't you don't get kicked out right away, you're still going to hell. You know what I'm saying? God's still going to whoop your butt. For messing with his children. And that's just what it is. He says, what? Touch not my anointed. And do my prophets no harm. Like, there's requirements for God's children. Like, that's why you don't put your mouth on just anybody either. That's why you watch what you say. Because even if the person don't hear it, God sure hears it. And you gonna pay for that. So, like, with this, God is disappointed. He's very disappointed, very disappointed, because your only job is to protect his sheep and to lead them in the right direction and to equip them, equip them for the war that's coming, for the war that they live, you know, in their own daily lives. Like, you shouldn't be holding information to where they have to come to church to be saved. You should be giving them things and tools so that when they leave church... 
they can also know how to war they can also know how to uh, you know speak to others preach to others help others like it, it should be more and and i'm not putting all of the you know like the blame you know on the church because too you know sheeps when you are being fed eat good enjoy yourself but also go home and feed yourself feed yourself too because if you're constantly waiting on somebody and, and it takes a whole week for you to get another word and the devil's getting right back in there right back in there and so you have to constantly be on guard constantly be in the word of god constantly be worshiping and building your relationship and turning the world down and turning things down and making time for you and god like i'd be preaching or i did preach in my my other videos you know like seriously a relationship with god is needed and reading the word because the word renews you the word gives you identity i do not understand why people act like this bible is such a horrible thing like this also says great things about us people are so worried about rules and regulation and someone's trying to control you the bible don't control you it frees you it frees you what you mean god said i am fearfully and wonderfully made that's free god says i have dominion that's free god said the serpent and the lion and all them things is under my feet i mean that's free that's free and if you ask me god says he loves me that's free god said he made plans for me before i was even in my mother's womb that's free because now i don't gotta figure my life out and struggle and take all these classes to figure things out now i just gotta sit at the feet of god and god will tell me who i am whether he tells me himself or whether i gotta read it through here and he says that's about you i mean come on come on to see how even you know with with paul you know he was out here and he was killing christians and he thought that was the right thing to do and yet god visits him in damascus and says why are you prosecuting me and then he turns this man's life around and then he uses him and gives him an unusual anointing to where people could touch and they'd be healed. I'm just saying. So now I ain't got to be perfect. I could be lost going the wrong way. And God can still find me and check me and change me and bless me. But you know the Bible also says that the devil has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever. So I'm just going to take that for what it is. But as I'm saying though. God is not playing so shepherds if you lead in god's people astray i feel bad for you because god's not playing and he's coming in and he's tearing stuff down like jesus was flipping over tables you about to see the wrath in these next couple of months i am telling you you are about to see the wrath of god flooding if you do not repent if you do not come back if you do not apologize if you don't get it together you don't say god search me oh god clean me purify me make me right again i know my intentions were wrong but father from the beginning they were right but the world got me caught up i strayed i got around the wrong people i made some bad decisions father forgive me help me change me you guys are about to see leaders fall down leaders you know people are gonna be dying i mean you about to see a whole lot a whole lot because god does not play about his children you are going to see like i've been saying we're living in the days of isaiah 60 verses 1 and 2 and 3 we are living in those days right now we are living in it we're gonna see the darkness and it's gonna be crazy but a lot of the children of god of god are gonna start shining you're going to be able to tell who they are because it's going to be so dark out that you're going to see them because they are light why are they light because god is light 
and we're, we're still, you know, seeing, you know, the tears from the wheat. We're still seeing these things. And, wow, you guys. What God is doing is beautiful because it's for the love of his children. It's for the love of his children, man. Um, God also gave me Second Peter... I think that's 3-9, or is that 2-9? Let me just go to it, because that actually looks like I was, let's see, is it 3-9 or 2-9? Oh, that's first Peter. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so it's, it is 3-9. Uh, so it says, the Lord is not slow about his promise. As some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So this is to get you guys to come on back as well. You know, for some of you, it'll be too late because you won't want to repent. But God always gives a warning first. And God, God loves, God, God is love, but he's also a man of, of his word he's also a fighter who cares about his children and who will fight for them who will go to war for them who you know there, there's even a scripture where it says like we cannot be taken out of god's hand no one can snatch us from his hand and that's why you know he leaves that room for repentance because some of you 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 were marked from birth and you just went astray and god's saying all right come on back now i, I let you live in the world so you could understand so when you return you come to me with your whole heart because you've already tasted the world and you don't like the world and you understand what i am and who i am and how i make you feel now because you've you've discovered that uh, you know the world sees you as unworthy you've discovered that the world don't care about you you discovered that they make you feel like you are you know unvalidated like you ain't good enough like you'll never be good enough like you're always in competition with somebody like you gotta fight for you know yourself to be seen or for you to be loved or you gotta do these worldly things just for the world to love you and that's just not what it is god said you live that life now come on home so i can love you and show you who you really are that there is no competition because i've only made one of you and i made a position just for you there is no other it's you now come on and step into it instead of thinking you're not worthy and you guys hold on i do not understand i got 10 percent, and i've only been on here for 46 minutes boy the devil be trying boy all right y'all so anyways let me hurry up and read this last scripture that he actually showed me before i am um, I got um started all this so he brought me to this and this is what happened to you guys uh, some of you shepherds this and this is Ezekiel 28 he says because your heart is lifted up and you have said I am a God I sit in the seat of God in the heart of the sea yet you are a man and not God although you make your heart like the heart of God behold you are wiser than Daniel there is no secret that is a match for you but your wisdom and understanding and your acquired riches for yourself and have acquired gold and silver for your treasures but your great wisdom uh, by your trade you have increased your riches and your heart is lifted up because of your riches therefore thus says the lord because you have made your heart like the heart of god he said therefore behold i will bring strangers among you the most ruthless of the nations and they will draw their swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defile your splendor they will bring you down to the pit and you will die oh the death of those who are slain in the heart of the sea 
will you still say i am a god in the presence of your slayer though you are a man and not god in the hand of those who won't who wound you you will die the death of an uns of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers for i have spoken declared the lord mm. Mm. oh that's deep that is deep 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 um but anyways, God isn't playing, y'all. Pick a side. Pick a side. Shepherds, get it together because God is going to expose you guys because he's not playing. He loves his sheep. And I'm going to say sheeps. He loves his sheeps. He don't play about them and he do anything for them. Whether that's you dying spiritually, whether that's you dying to the fame, dying to, you know, dying to the, the man even dying in the physical dying to your fame dying to the grace dying demoting you god's not playing all right y'all i'm gonna leave it at that my computer over here dying but take this word back to the lord you know he kept telling me today that i need to to release this word i already went to class and and everything and since i woke up he'd been telling me to to, to post this word and, and kept reminding me so i did my duty hmm. i released the word god has for you i pray you guys fall to repentance i hope all you sheep of god are excited because he's coming for you all those who've done you wrong he's going to handle them and he's going to send out new sheep with pure hearts um who will become shepherds over you who he you know led over things and built them and equipped them to take over that person's role who have completely took advantage of you and dominated you and led you astray even if it was in the form of making you pay money for blessings or you know, to be healed and things like that god sees it all god sees it all and he's going to deal with them so you guys have a beautiful and a blessed night it is now 1 46 a.m and it is thursday november 17 so you guys be blessed have a wonderful night and know god sees you and hears you and still has great plans for you all right y'all bye